Hey guys, it's Jack Jack and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are finally doing another Bible study video. We are doing Matthew chapter 24. I know you guys have been waiting for this and we're finally here. I'm so sorry it's taken so long. Goodness me. I don't even have an excuse. I don't, I don't. It's just been crazy. If you've missed Matthew chapter one through 23, any of those, I will leave my playlist linked in the cards for you guys so you can watch those um, and catch up before watching this video if you'd like or you can just jump right in. I mean, I'm not the boss of you, so you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but if you would like to see the other chapters that we went over, I will leave that in the cards and in the description box for you guys, my whole playlist of Bible study videos. Also, I am like decked out in love and faith. So um, my shirt, look at this cute little turtle. It says she is clothed with strength and dignity and laughs without fear of the future. Proverbs 31, 25? Oh, it doesn't even say on here. And Love and Faith also has jewelry, which I'm wearing today. I don't wear jewelry often. Uh, well, especially not rings. I for sure like never wear rings. At least like not anymore. I used I used to like I used to be all decked out with jewelry like all the time. But now I just like don't. But look at this ring. I thought it was really cute. It's like this double cross. It was a limited edition ring, so I wanted to pick it up. It is adjustable, so if you got fat fingers like I do, you're in luck. And then I also have this Faith Cross necklace. I will leave a link down below if you are interested in checking out Love and Faith. I do have a coupon code that you can use for, I believe, 20% off your order if you use the code JackJack. So there you go. Save you some money. I am affiliated with them. Just giving you guys a heads up. So I make a tiny, tiny commission from that. Um, I'm also their social media manager, so I work very closely with them in general. So I got a lot of love and faith stuff. Okay, anyways, enough of that. Let's just go ahead and jump on in to this study. There's really only two main parts to this chapter that we're reading. The destruction of the temple and signs of the end times, and then the day and hour unknown. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into it. I have a ton of notes here. Um, I use a whole bunch of different things and resources to study. Enduring Word is one of them. Harvest Family Fellowship is another. And Daily Grace Co. is another awesome resource that you can use for like Bible study uh, tools and materials. So um, check out those resources. I will leave them all linked below. So Matthew chapter 24 verse 1. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its building. So he left the temple leaving behind like, you know, the religious leaders that he was just talking to, you know, the previous chapter in chapter 23, he was you know, talking like, woe to you Pharisees and teachers of the law. He talked about the seven woes and then um, was just basically fed up with them, right? So he left them in the temple and as they were walking away, the disciples came up to him to call his attention to the building because it was just a beautiful, huge, magnificent building. And so, you know, the disciples are just kind of like pointing it out like, look at this amazing building. Um, verse two, do you see all these things? He asked, this is Jesus speaking. Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be throw, thrown down. So this is a prophecy that Jesus is sharing um, that the temple that they're looking at that they just came out of is not gonna be standing for long. And from the research that I was doing, I learned that 40 years after Jesus said this, a Jewish revolution against the Romans started that would eventually lead to the destruction of this temple, just like Jesus said, and that was in 70 AD. Verse three, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So they're asking Jesus this question and I think, yeah, I could be wrong. We don't know. We don't know inside the disciples' minds, right? But I think when they were asking this question, like when is the destruction of this temple going to be? And like, is that going to be like, that's when it's going to be the end times, which obviously it's not because the temple was destroyed in 70 AD and Jesus' second coming has not happened yet. So Jesus is now going to talk about what are the signs to look for. Um, so in verse four, Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. 
You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. These are like the signs that Jesus was sharing, right? Like this, this, and this is gonna happen, right? But don't be alarmed, so basically prepare yourself. Like don't, don't let that startle you. Don't be scared or frightened by that. Um, know that these things have to happen, but it's still not the end time, he says but the end is still to come. Like that's not entirely it basically. But these are like, oh, well, he'll say it in a second. Let me, let me just keep reading. Verse seven, nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Also the King James version, version said that there will be pestile pestilences, pestilences, but basically that means plagues. Verse eight, all these are the beginning of birth pains. Like these are the beginning labor moments. Like it's not the end time, but the, this is the beginning towards the end, um, if that makes sense. I circled back in verse four, watch out that no one deceives you. And I even wrote it like on the spine of my book because that has been something that has been on my heart for, I want to say like the past maybe six months at this point. It's been so heavy on my heart because I, I see how people have been so easily deceived by things around them and it's like the most heartbreaking thing for me to see and like I don't know why it just like it it really breaks my heart to see people get so deceived and like not search the word for themselves like they'll just believe hearsay from other people whether that's on social media or whether that's even people within the church they'll just believe the things that they hear without without looking into it any further, like on their own to confirm these things or, um, you know, whatever it may be. We know that God's word is the truth. And this is, scripture is what we can rely on. God's promises are true. And if you ever doubt anything, when you're out and about, you can come back to scripture to see if, if that's true or if it's reliable or if it's false, whatever it may be, like you can trust in the word. And I just, people people aren't doing that at least the people that i'm seeing and it's like it scares me and it, it breaks my heart and it's just like what and this is something like i i've been praying about like what what do you do like what what can i do what what do you do other than like pray for them that they'll have eyes to see and ears to hear and that they'll search jesus and search god's word for themselves but like what else can you do like oh it just breaks my heart i just want to like shake them like don't let people deceive you do not be deceived i just wanted to share that like that's been weighing very heavy on my heart the past several months but um moving on verse nine then you will be handed over so you know all those are going to happen and it's going to be the beginning of these birth pains right of this labor then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of me like, could you just imagine like Jesus telling you this and the disciples just like, this is going to happen to us. Like, are you ready? Like, are you ready to be persecuted and put to death all for following in Jesus? Like, are you ready for that? Like, that's, that's very scary, but like, that's the reality of it. And that's the, that's just like the amazing faith that they had in Jesus, knowing who he is, knowing that he is the true Messiah and moving forward, even knowing what was going to happen to them, you know? And I think that's amazing about Jesus as well. Like he knew what was going to happen to him. You know, he's predicted his death already like a number of times and yet he still moved forward. And that's just because Jesus loves us so much and he he was on a mission here to save lives and to be a redeemer and a, a savior for all people, all people that believe. But just like knowing, like putting yourselves in either Jesus or the disciple situation, knowing what is going to happen to you and still moving forward, like, whew, that, that's gotta be hard, you know? And how blessed are we to be able to have our faith and share our faith as freely as we do? I mean, not even the whole world has that same, that same luxury and freedom that we do to share our faith. And so just be, be blessed that you're able to have your faith the way that you do and 
And even more so for that reason, don't be afraid to share it. Verse 10, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive, deceive many people. Another sentence that's just like freaking heartbreaking, man. Like people will, will turn away from faith. And I'm actually in the book that I'm reading right now in my book club, um, How Did I Get Here by Christine Kane. I talk about this all the time on my vlog channel and on my Instagram. I'm obsessed with this book. It is so, so good. But e even in one of the chapters, she talks about, you know, people that turn away from their faith and just how like, oh, how heartbreaking and sad it is because a lot of these times, you know, people turn away from their faith because of, you know, um, they've been hurt by people or hurt by the church or they've just experienced great pains that they 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 see no hope in anymore and that's like that's just so heartbreaking but Jesus is saying not only will they turn away from their faith but they will betray and hate each other and then this part and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people I have seen with my own eyes false prophets I have seen with my own eyes false teachers, false disciples. And it is scary to see that with your own eyes and to see how people, again, going back to being deceived, people are, are being deceived and that's what they're receiving, this, this falseness. And then verse 12, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Man, this is all just so sad. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Like Jesus is saying, like, you know, all these things are going to happen. Zosie, are you okay? I thought she peed. All these things are going to happen, but we need to stand firm in our faith. Like despite the things that like break our heart, despite the things that like may be scary to see, we need to stand firm in our faith at the end of the day. Verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Jesus is saying everyone is gonna know the gospel. Like no one is going to have an excuse that they don't know, that they don't know of God, that they don't know of Jesus. Don't know of Jesus. Um, the gospel will be preached in the whole world. So all those things, and then the end will come, Jesus says. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, that comes from Daniel, a couple places in Daniel, Daniel chapter nine and chapter 11 and chapter 12. Um, Daniel spoke of this like abomination that causes desolation and I'll get more into that in a second. But so when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. So when you see this, run away. And from the study notes that I was reading, um, a lot of people say this is like the Antichrist or whatever it may be. But when you see this abomination that causes desolation, run away from it. Also, other study notes were saying like, this could also represent idolatry. So um, idolatry in the church or in like the temple. So when you see that, run away, flee to the mountains, get out of there, do not stay there. And idolatry is something that we can easily surrender to and easily like, easily begin to like worship and, and honor without like fully realizing it. Idolatry is basically anything that you worship more than God. I don't think my definition was smart. Let's ask Siri. What is idolatry? Here's what I found. Dollar tree. <laughs> Extreme admiration, love, or reverence for something or someone. Okay, moving on to verse 17. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Like, leave it all there. Um, let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great distress. Like, you know, the great tri tri tribulation. <laughs> Why did I stutter just now? Unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. I've never read Revelations but I plan to this year. It's in my reading plan for the year. But from my understanding, okay, so the Old Testament is everything before Jesus. The New Testament, starting with the Gospels, is Jesus' time on earth, and then after that is the time after 
Jesus like resurrected and then the very last book in the Bible Revelations is prophecy still to come so um, when reading Revelations at least from my understanding from what I've heard that will talk about what the end times will look like and what to expect and what to look out for things that have not yet happened and I think it would probably talk about the Great Tribulation. My battery died and then I had to take care of Zoe who was eating dinner now. You could probably hear her. So I don't know really where I left off. Um, but I think, what was I saying? Um, verse 22, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Again, I haven't read, I haven't read Revelations, but I, just from what I've heard from church and different preachings, um, there is a rapture that basically will bring up God's people and will meet the Lord in the sky, um, will just be picked up. I think that's what verse 22 is talking about. Please enlighten me. I, I share these Bible study videos not because like I know everything. I'm just sharing what I'm learning. If you have any additional information that you can share and enlighten us with, definitely let me and the Low Flower family know in the comments below. Verse 23. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or here he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Verse 25, see, I have told you ahead of time. Basically, be prepared, always be prepared, y'all. Verse 26, so if anyone tells you, there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out, or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus says like, it's not gonna be this like secret exclusive thing, like it will be known. Everyone will see, it will be known when the Son of Man comes. He's not gonna be hiding over here and you have to come find him. Everyone's gonna know, everyone's gonna see. Verse 28, wherever there is a carcass, the vultures will gather. And this, just from like kind of the notes that I was like looking up and everything, this could just be like, kind of saying like judgment will come. Verse 29, immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. And that comes from Isaiah chapter 13 verse 10 and Isaiah 34, four. Then will appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then all the people of the earth will mourn it when they see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one from one end to the heavens to the other verse 32 now learn this lesson from the fig tree as soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out you know that summer is near even so when you see all these things you know that it is near right at the door so basically in the same way that nature speaks to us and we we see like that this pattern of like the leaves and when the twigs get tender and the leaves come out then you know summer is near basically there's going to be signs leading up to like you know the time is near i have a note for verse 33 i said when you see the signs Jesus spoke of, the abomination of desolation, followed by the great tribulation, and then followed by the signs in the heavens, then you know that Jesus return, Jesus' return to earth will come. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. And this moves us into the next section, the day and hour unknown. But about the day or hour, no one knows, even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. So Jesus saying like, Jesus in human form doesn't even know, only the father, only God in heaven knows. And so yes, there will be these signs. We know kind of like the order or pattern of what it will look like, but we will not know the hour or the day. Only God knows that. As it was in the days of Noah, it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. 
Again, be prepared because we don't know the, the day, the hour, we don't know. Verse 40, two men will be in the field. One will be taken up and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. And I believe like this being taken, I believe this is them being like, this example is them being taken before the great tribulation. This is the rapture where we rise up and meet the Lord in the air. Verse 42, therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day the Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would have not let his house be broken into. So you must also be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. So we should always be prepared. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in the household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for the servants whose masters find him doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put them in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards. The master of the servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him into pieces and ass assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And we know every time it says weeping and gnashing of teeth, that's talking about hell, the eternal lake of fire. So in that example, the first servant was doing what he was supposed to do. So he was prepared. And in that second, that second servant, he was not about the business that his master left him to. And he mistreated his servants and then indulged in worldly pleasures, like drinking with the drunkards and stuff. So he definitely was not prepared. And what was the consequence? weeping and gnashing of teeth. So I think that whole last section just really, really puts an emphasis on how we must be prepared at all time. Don't let the enemy convince you that there is no hurry to do the will of God. There is no hurry to, um, preach the gospel to others, to share your testimony with others. Don't be fooled by that because we don't know the time or day when Jesus will return. Jesus is returning. We don't know when, but Jesus is returning. Um, so I am going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I hope you guys in enjoyed this Bible study video. Leave your comments down below, your study notes. I want to hear from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you next time.